Hello, Hoovians, and welcome to the third show. Now, today, I have another, I say another, because it is another, wonderful interview. And this one will will probably, you'll, more people will probably recognise either this person or the voice of the person. It's a one, the only, Phil Fletcher. Hello, Tom. How are you well? Hello, Hoovians, um, whoever you are. And, um, and so... Phil, you are, uh, as of right now, uh, in my opinion, one of the uh, most modern slash famous puppeteers in the UK, Sophia, at the moment. I thank you, and I thank you, Sophia, as well, if you're watching. <laughs> right. So, um, so to kick off this, we're going to go way back in the past, not too far, not, not, not that far that, that we see Toot and Carmoon. But um, my question is, how did you get into puppetry? Well, I was a little kid when I first started doing puppets. I started making them out of paper and sellotape and envelopes and any old rubbish you can find around the house when I was about five or six or whatever. And when I was 11, we got a sewing machine. And that's when I made my first puppet out of cloth. And I've got it here, actually. This is the first puppet I ever made, Josh. Wow. wow. And that puppet is now 33 years old. Time flies. It does fly. So I made that as a little kid, and I started doing kids' birthday parties and what have you. Um, for kids, actually, who weren't that much younger than I was doing the shows. And I first started earning money when I was 11 years old doing puppets. So I, wow. I've been a sort of semi-pro for 33 years. And today, as we record this, Tom, yeah. I don't know when it goes out, but as we record this interview, today, 12 years ago today, was our first In and Hacker Links went out on the telly. Wow. Wow, time has flown. It literally has flown. We both started work, at, Ian Sterling and I both started working at CBBC on the 18th of May, 2009, and we pre-recorded some stuff to go out the weekend after, and that is today. Wow. Sunday, whatever date it is today, 11.30 this morning, 12 years ago, our first ever TV stuff went out together. Wow. I, I, I remember uh, watching that. I was very uh, small. I haven't grown much, but I was very, I was very small. Um, unfortunate for me, not for growing. But what was... Never you... rated growing. If you want to be a puppeteer, being too tall is a bit of a hindrance. <laughs> yeah. But what actually uh, inspired you to join this career? I don't remember. I've done it since I was a little kid. I've no memory of not doing puppets. So I literally, I cannot remember. Now, what got me to tell you was, I used to do a bit of YouTube stuff yeah. and I used to do cabaret and the BBC literally rang me up one day to come and audition to play Hacker. Yeah. And I literally got the job like that. I didn't apply for it. I didn't seek it out. I never sent any CVs off. I've never auditioned. I've never, I've never sought out an audition before. Mm. They've always come to me. Wow. That, that, that's incredible. Uh, it is, and... but it's not a great story. It's not a, it's no struggle. It's not like a, it would be a rubbish book. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you could make more money if you made it into a book, a very short book, but very... It'd be more of a pamphlet, I should think, <laughs> or a leaflet at best, <laughs> because literally everything I've ever done has always just fallen into my lap with little to no effort from me. Wow. Now, not only do you perform these wonderful um, foam creatures... Uh, yeah, and... foam. Yeah, they're not all creatures. Some of them are human, which sort of freak me out sometimes because I might be taken over by puppets. But it would eventually. Yeah. yeah. But how did you learn to build the puppets? Self-taught. When I first started, as I've said, there was no internet. There was no how to do this sort of videos. There was no research available. I never went to the library. I never looked at books. I just started cutting up stuff and seeing what worked. And that is more or less actually still what I do. I very rarely pre-design these characters. Although in this case, Snoddygrass, I did pre-design him. Mm. But normally, like with this fellow and all, most of the others, I just start cutting, sticking stuff on and seeing what I end up with. Wow. I don't really put that much thought into it. I think a lot of people procrastinate too much or overthink stuff. I just do whatever the hell I want and it often works. I now, never lose sleep over it. Yeah. But how long does it take you to build these uh, wonderful creatures? I can do one in a day if I get the day to, to myself or if I, uh, I've got the, the inspiration to do it. Sometimes nothing comes in your head. You can't think of anything, so you don't bother. But if I've got the idea, yeah, 
I can do it in a day. Now, uh, what was your favourite programme growing up as a kid to inspire you to become I was an a big, entertainer? I was a big fan of Rod Hull and Emus. I was a big fan of the Pink Windmill Show. He was one of my biggest influences, actually. One of the most underrated puppeteers, in my opinion, Rod, Rod Hull. Yeah. I nearly said Ronnie Lee Drew then, but I was a big fan of Rainbow as well and Zippy. In fact, yeah. Zippy is the character I've based Hacker's voice on. Wow. That that's I, I can sort of I can sort of tell I can see that now. Well now you know, the next time you watch it, or certainly if you watch the older stuff on YouTube yeah. or whatever, it's very much like that, George. <laughs> wow. But um with with um Rod Hull and Emu, which uh, I'm I'm also a, a big fan of. I, I quite liked how how it, like Rod had the freedom to randomly chuck himself into freezers in the middle of yeah. prisons. His, his brilliance was his lack of fear. He was utterly fearless. And he, he uh, you really bought into him, I think. You really believed it was a separate entity because he performed it so well. Even though the puppet itself was knackered, it had holes in it. It was rubbish, really, wasn't it? It was knackered thing. But the fact that he gave everything to it, you believed in it. And when he, Emu threw him into that chest freezer, you believe Emu's just chucked him into that chest yeah. freezer because the man was so brilliant. Yeah. And it's, 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 not, it's not easy to, to throw yourself into things not knowing what's in it. Because he, yeah. he wouldn't have cared. He just did it for the laugh. But anything could, he could have broke his neck. Yeah. It, would, it would have really hurt. But, yeah. but did you ever see the Emu show, like the sequel that, that his son did? Because I didn't think yeah. that worked as well. It didn't work as well, and it was and it was not down to him. It was just that nobody's as good as Rod Hull. It's as simple as that. You can you can do your best, but that man was brilliant. And the fact actually that he is never lauded or never even listed in puppeteer ranks mm. to me shows how good he was because you you believe that thing yeah. was real. Mm. Well, um, I sort of saw, I don't know if you've seen it, but I sort of saw a, a video on uh, one of the Pink Windmill Kids YouTube channels where she now has a YouTube channel where she just randomly, every so often, just has a chat with Emu and then just says how a week's gone. Have you ever seen that? I haven't, but I've been looking it up. Which Emu kid is it? Which Pink Windmill kid? I think it's the, I don't know her name, but I think it's the woman that was, was in green. Is it Katina or something? I, th I think I think it was. Because I think I think if it's the right one I'm thinking of, she was Rod Hall's stepdaughter. Oh, was she? Yeah. Wow. And years later, funnily enough, because uh, I was a massive fan of Pink Windmill and Emu yeah. and all that, and I subsequently worked with one of the Pink Windmill kids, Joe Greco. Yeah. And I'm Joe to you. Remember that one? Yeah. Well, he's a puppeteer as well, and I worked with him on The Dark Crystal. Wow. Well, we'll get on to The Dark Crystal a little bit later on because I think that was a fantastic series. But um, what? so what was your favourite film? I know that's like a really standard question, but because you're you're an avid DVD fan, such... Well, such you can see the room I'm in, can't you? Yeah. I'm in the DVD room as we speak, and I can show you my favourite film of all time, and I've got it right here. It happens to be a puppet film, and it's Meet the Feebles. Mm. Wow, yeah. It was my biggest influence, that. That is my most... Um, I've nicked most of my act from this film. If you ever watch this, you should watch it. Yeah. There's a character in it called Dr Quack, who's a duck, and I nicked his voice for this fella yeah. many years ago. So I recommend anyone watching this, Meet the Feebles, directed by Peter Jackson. Wow. Well, um, what, what I quite like about The Room You're In, which we'll talk about a little bit, is that, uh, is that my room that I'm in now is uh, so crammed with stuff, I can only fit, as you can see in my background, one line of DVDs, and yeah. it's all Doctor Who, because I love Doctor Who, and I had to use the whole other room to be filled with DVDs and VHSs. Where did your DVD uh, career begin? I first started collecting DVDs in 1997. I went to HMV in the Tropic Centre, and they had a DVD section in HMV that was about the size of your one there. Wow. You only had about that many because they were brand new. And I said, what the hell are these? These videos are thin. <laughs> so I went in there and I bought a DVD and it was the Pet Shop Boys live in concert. Wow. Uh, and it was called Somewhere. I can't see it now, but that was the first one I bought. And I didn't have a machine then. Yeah. I got my mate to get me a machine. And back then the DVD players were about 500 quid. Wow. That's... Because they were, you just couldn't get them. They were new and it was massive and heavy. And it was a Samsung one, I think. Mm. Um, 
but now you can get them for 15 quid, can't you? Yeah, they're, they're very cheap. But uh, on the land of DVD, there's something that always baffled me ever since DVDs have become a thing and ever since I was uh, able to remember things. That how come hacker uh, like hacker time and anything hacker related have never been made it to a, a DVD? Do you know? I don't know. I can only assume that it's BBC and because it's not a production, it's in house. I don't know if they're allowed. Mm. Um, it's never been discussed. In fact, it's never been mentioned that I don't. I've no idea. I'd love to have hacker time on DVD. Yeah, I mean I've got them all uh, because I got them from work, but I've not got. They're not commercially available. Mm. As, unlike this cup which is available Ooh. and uh, where can you buy the mug red bubble just search like a tea dog you'll see it on there yeah it's, still, it's unofficial but yeah who, who cares <laughs> yeah and now speaking of hacker do you own the rights to hacker i don't the bbc only so so do you do you have to ask the bbc to make the hacker youtube channel the hacker youtube channel is bbc run yeah um and I do show. I just do uh, work for it, and um, and every time we do a VT, we decide where it's going to live. If it's going to go on YouTube or on the television or on Instagram or whatever. Mm. But I've got quite a lot of input into it. They're quite good. The BBC are brilliant with with Hacker, and they let me do more or less whatever I want. So, how did Hacker actually start out? Because you didn't actually play Hacker once upon a time. I didn't. It was originally performed by a man called Andy Heath, who again I've worked with subsequently on the Dark Crystal and other things. Um, and he played Hacker in series one of Scoop. And back then, Hacker didn't speak. He just growled and grunted. Now, you may have seen that. I have never seen it, the series one. Mm. But that had already gone out. It had been on telly before I got the job. So when they were looking for new presenters for CBBC, they already had the puppet of Hacker in a box. So they didn't have to design a new character. But because Hacker was, um, didn't speak or anything in Scoop, they could easily recast him without it b- being a problem, really. So when I first started doing it, I did what Andy did and just growled and grunted for a, a while until it became a bit dull. And I just started adding words in and then we ended up and now we just stop talks like me now. So how did you develop the voice? Because you had to like try and recreate um, Andy's voice first. Yeah, yeah, to a degree, but he didn't do much in Scoop, really. So that, and then we also played it that Hacker, Hacker was playing a part in Scoop. That was always the storyline. The Hacker was an actor from Scoop, so it didn't really, I mean, he could have walked into CBBC and spoke like Noel Coward for all it mattered, because we could have said, well, in Scoop, he was playing a part. So I didn't really have to copy it, but it, it was just this, oh, get back out of my office, and all this garbage. Yeah. But it wouldn't have lasted if we'd continued to do that, because he would never got hacker time. Mm. You couldn't have had a host of a show who couldn't speak. No, well, I, I, re- I loved hacker time. Hacker time was one of those things was that it was one of the greatest shows but why did it just randomly stop? Because it seemed like if you were going off a narrative, it didn't seem like it had a satisfying ending. It didn't. I don't know why it didn't stop. It never got decommissioned. It never got cancelled. It just didn't get recommissioned. Um, and I think then it's like bosses in the CBB, bosses at the BBC change. I just think they don't know what's happened. Or do you know what I mean? There's that yeah. many different uh, changes of staff and things. I think people just don't know what they've got or what. So it just gets forgotten about. A lot of things yeah. just get forgotten about with no actual malice or intent, really. Mm-hmm. And they, and because I'm already in CBBC, I think people just thought, well, he's on telly every day. What is it different tag of time? I don't. Th- I just think people just don't know. Yeah. Well, what's what's quite good about um, the new era of like like the internet and that we have a YouTube. We managed. It's quite, it's quite good that you managed to salvage Hacker Time for YouTube, but it's the issues uh, around copyright and that. Do you, do you feel like Hacker Time could get forgotten if, if like, the BBC took down every YouTube video to do with Hacker Time? Yes, it would get forgotten, I do think, but as long as I remember it, I'm not that bothered. <laughs> yeah. I remember uh, it fondly because yeah. I, I've got the DVDs of it. Yeah. Now, um, how, what was it like working at Hacker Time? Because you had the... Like really hardest job of playing every character you could think of. It was hard work, um, and I was in every scene. There wasn't any scenes where I wasn't in, um, even if I was done. Because I played Hacker, but then I played Derek and Will mainly. But then I played all loads of other one-off characters. And Neil Sterenberg, who built Hacker, he played Lolly and Herman. But generally, I was in every shot. Yeah. Um, and there were like ten or eleven hour days, and it was just me yapping on. 
it was knackering and your back's knackered and your shoulders knackered and your arms knackered and your voice is knackered yeah. but you've got your own show so you can't complain too much yeah and and Go i have I, your own telly show yeah and it, it was really it was really interesting but i i think that the bbc should rerun hacker time and, and i don't know if anyone at the bbc would be watching this video I if you're doubt. watching the bbc you rerun hacker time yeah because um because we want it and we can't get enough of it and i feel like the more hacker time we get the more chance the bbc will get more viewership from the, their older audience win-win yeah like they're doing with the like they did with eurovision how they put on the 1974 eurovision from um brighton on over the weekend Oh, did they do that just to get yeah. some of the older people in well they, they occasionally do repeat hacker time it does crop up sometimes um at random times or in random countries because i occasionally get the odd like repeat fee for it so it does get shown occasionally here there and everywhere mm. and it'll be nice to show it again it'd be nice to show it in the afternoon so i can link into it again like yeah. we used to mm. but um it might happen yeah. you never know you, you never know it whatever the bbc are feeling that time now my now with um with the change in children's entertainment which you can see from way back in in the 60s with Sutty and Sweet being on the BBC to to 2021 and and the be and the being like less likely how do you feel that your your job has changed since you started to where you are now with all with all the changes of like the removing of desks removing of the or removing of bits and bobs and making it more uh down with the kids as she was to as it were. Do um, you know what? In all seriousness, I don't think it's changed at all from my point of view. I'm happy for it to have no desks. As long as you bottom a frame, it's better when there's no desks. Yeah. You can run around more. Yeah. It's as if you're clearly hiding something, which you are. Mm -hmm. uh, Sooty and Sweep are often behind desks because they're so tiny. I mean, they're only little, the puppets yeah. are, are really small. So it's harder for them to exist bottom of frame because yeah. you, you you're never convinced that, that how tall they are with hacker because he's always <laughs> the same height you don't you're, you don't think god he must have four foot legs yeah so you keep a bit different because they're so small which yeah. i actually have performed i performed sweep in the last yeah. series of the sweep. and they still show that on itvb so i don't think and they're still doing the same old gags in that that they used to do in harry corbett's day so yeah. i think people always like a pie in the face some things don't really change no uh, and and I was I was going to move on to that next. So how did you get the job as sweep? Because I, that must have been just at randomly out the blue of because I because it's high TV and you were an avid BBC uh, Klingon as you would as you will. I am. I still am a BBC Klingon. They uh, well, I <laughs> mates with Richard Cadell. Yeah. So I've known Richard for years, and um, he rang me up out the blue and said, "Right, I know you're not going to be available." But is there any chance you might be available to come and play Sweep? I said, yes, there is. I'll have two weeks off. So I took two weeks off CBBC, went down to Somerset and did two weeks of Sweep, which was a six-part series. Yeah. And it was a bucket list gig for me, because I was a massive fan of Sweep, mm. particularly in the Sutty show. So when you get the chance to play Sweep, you take it, don't you? Yeah. What's good about that is that people can, um, if you've got Amazon, I don't know, why you wouldn't have Amazon, but you can go and buy uh, these Sutty and Sweep episodes yeah, that, on DVD. That is on DVD. It's called the Sutty's Talent Show, that series I did. The DVD is called Sutty's Talent yeah. Show, I think. Do, do you know whether it's going to return for new episodes? Because it seems like they're just repeating the old episodes. They've been doing that since 2019. Yeah, we. I think we shot ours in 2018, didn't we? Yeah. Um, Yes, there's always plans for future sooty things, and Richard's always in touch about doing future things, but then finances get involved and things get put back. But I'm sure something will happen at some point in the future, yes. Yeah, and, and um, you're not only uh, a puppeteer, you're also, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this and you might not agree, but you're also a pop star with the, yes. uh, with the comedy troupe Pound Shop Boys. How I'm sure happen? I'm cocker. Have I got a CD in here? I have as well. Ooh, more promotion for you. Well, promotion. This is the Pound Shop Boys' current album, Nostalgia. This is the Gone Viral edition, which features the Banana Splits song, which we did on YouTube, has had 1.3 million views. Wow. Where, where can they buy the album? 
You can get the album from pawnshopboys.bandcamp.com. You can download it. You can buy the physical CD. We've got caps available, badges. And we've got a new album out soon called Obviously. Pawn Shop Boys, Obviously. And we've just finished recording that. And that'll be out very soon. Ooh, how did the Pawn Shop Boys begin? Because it doesn't seem like an area that you're familiar to. I'm a big fan of the Pet Shop Boys. Um, and I've always been a big fan of old 80s kids tv themes and i thought they'd make some of them would make great electro 80s sounding uh, pop hits and i always wanted to do fireman and sam as the pet shop boys even when i was a kid i thought fireman and sam would make a great pet shop boys song and 25 years later i met john matthews who was also in a, in a band called spray he used to be in a band called the cuban boys who had a couple of big hits in the 90s and we got chatting and we started recording stuff together. And I said to, I said this about Fine and Sam, and he said, well, we should record it then. So we recorded it just so we could put it on our own iPods or whatever. Yeah. And then we thought we could do something with it. So we just thought, oh, Pound Shop Boys is a funny title. <laughs> so we dress up as the Pet Shop Boys, call ourselves the Pound Shop Boys and bring out all this nonsense. And it's done really well. And we're on to our, this will be now our third album. Do the albums cost a pound by any chance? No, they don't. They cost five pounds. Oh, that, that would have been that would have made the job. It would have been perfect, yeah. wouldn't it? But you yeah. can't have everything. No. <laughs> yeah, you have to make money somehow. Yes. Yeah. Now, now one of one of the questions that uh my dad desperately wanted me to ask, uh, which, which is Is he one. watching this? Uh he, he will be watching this, my dad. Uh he's called uh, Steve Mason. He will be watching this. Hello, Steve. If you're watching. And um he wants to know, is Hacker a border terrier? Yes, he is. But if you ask Hacker that, he'll say he's a bored of being asked that question. <laughs> because uh, we have a... He's probably downstairs, Ween. But we have our own border terrier who's What's 15. Uh, Rusty. Rusty. 15? Yeah. yeah. He's 15, but his favourite hobby is just walking into a room, weeing, and then running out of the room. That's very similar to my favourite hobby. <laughs> but yeah. I'm a little bit older. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 because Ronnie you, Lee you... Drew does that as well, but that's his age. <laughs> yeah. No, because now I, mean, I asked Ronnie this question. Now I wondered if you knew any more insight into this. Was uh, do you remember an, an event in 2017 oh where where you were uh, featured on ITV where you were with Hacker Dodge, uh, the Queen from Spitting Image, a whole host of other puppet puppet characters. I do remember that. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago, was it? No, it was in twenty. It was in twenty seventeen. Um, what Wandel, Wandel, Brindle, Pike, if I'm pronouncing the name correctly, uploaded it as a YouTube video on his fantastic YouTube channel. I didn't think it was that long ago. Well, it, it was. I was even shocked as well when I when I had found that it was in twenty seventeen. But I thought it, it turns was out I don't remember it that well. Then I thought it was a, two years ago. Well, well, Ron, Ronnie said that uh, apparently it went on to him going into Dark Crystal and your resistance. Was that similar to you? Did you go from that to filming Dark Crystal? Or, or I think we'd remember? already filmed it. We'd already done Dark Crystal. That was after it. That's the wrong way around that. He, he must have got... It must be his age. It is his age. <laughs> um, we definitely did Dark Crystal first because yeah. on the at, at that, people were asking for our autographs from Dark Crystal. Ah! Ah! Because makes... I signed a, somebody's poster at for age of resistance so it's definitely the wrong way around because yeah i'd done sooty first yeah and sooty was 2018 mm. well well uh, i really liked dark crystal and and i i've got one i've got one of the figures down below uh, in my hand that i'm going to bring up in a second i've got some hanging in front of this and it's uh here you go there's just another plug agra yeah i've got the if, if we look at the back it's it's been sat and sat. i've got the whole collection now no, I'll be honest with you, Tom. I've never watched it. Well, I reckon you should, because I've seen it twice. And really funnily, speaking of CBC, I don't know if you know this information, but I was watching the behind-the-scenes documentary, and the bizarre thing happens. They're having a chat just, just about, oh, we need to do this, this, and this. And you look in the background, and you see the uh, characters from the CBC classic, Me and My Monsters, just standing, like the big, the, uh, oh, what's it called? The big, um, the big the red one. one. Yeah. yeah. Well, the red one, the red one. Because that, when that, every time that rerun, I was always watching it, bang on. So you would be there chatting, saying, next is Me and My Monsters. And I'll be there, like, oh, really watching it. And on YouTube, 
I have a you be, you can see this from the playlist is public. I have a playlist called Retro because I love everything retro. I've got a typewriter to that side of me and I've got a hi fi to that side of me uh, around my corner. And retro, I like it. Yeah, and all on that playlist, it has everything from anything hacker hacker related, anything sooty, sweep. Emu, anything, and Me and My Monsters was one of the best programs ever. Did you ever watch Me and My Monsters? I did watch it because, uh, well, no, I've never watched it, but I'm aware of it because we did it. We did do some two ways with yeah. them, and they sent us some um, uh, VTs for us to play in because Don Austin played the big one. What was his mm. name? Haggis or something? Yeah, yeah, Haggis. Yeah, I think he was Haggis. Well, Donald Austin was inside that costume, and Don yeah. worked with me on Hacker Time, and he also played the Ghost of Christmas Present in Muppet Christmas Carol. Mm. But he was on Dark Crystal as well. Yeah. Now, now with with the series The Office, it's a it's a question. Now, do you when so back when he was in London before he moved yeah. to Media City in Manchester? Did yeah. with the having the TV? Did you ever watch? Because Chris Chris Johnson has said this on his fantastic podcast, Another Plug, Out of the Broom Cupboard. How I recommend you listen to it on. Well, I'm in the first one of that, aren't I? Yeah. And and then um, and did you ever actually watch the program that were being broadcast on the little TV in the room, or was that just a prop? No, it was on there, but we, there was no sound. So we I, actually, I've not really seen anything on CBBC in the last twelve years with the sound on, mm. other than stuff that I'm in. So I've never seen um, I've never seen Tracy Beaker oh, wow. with the sound on. I've never seen anything because why would I watch them? I'm, I'm in my forties. Well, I, I reckon because you've got the sound off, you should you should have like done voices for them. Like they, they did a thing a few years ago where they had kids do voices for uh for like CBC shows and the programs are on mute and they've just got kids doing voices for them. I reckon I reckon you should have done that and then it wouldn't I have been. I think you're right. I think we have done that probably before at some point and yeah. it's a gag, but you're right, it would be good to redub stuff daft. Yeah. I'll now, suggest it next week. <laughs> now as as you're um, a puppeteer and a puppet fan, you you are you are you're one of the I reckon one of the most incredible Muppet recon reconstruction recreators. Where did you love the remaking puppets from the Muppets to it's, Kermit to Fozzie come from? I think it's just as a puppet builder, I think being able to make a replica of something is quite a useful skill to have. Because um, I always try and make them just by eye, so I have no I have no extra knowledge of how they are made than you have or anybody else has. But um, I'm quite good at looking at something and working out how that thing transpires into a flat, yeah. patternable shape. So if you can make a good Kermit, you can make a brilliant original character. Mm. And and I I think I think your your characters like. Because you're on, um, I'm gonna do another plug here. You're on a lot of um, puppet Facebook groups. Yes, uh, I there. like that. It's nice to get your stuff out there and show people what can mm. be done with very little um, technology. I don't mm. use any technology. I don't use 3D printing. I don't have a printer. I don't use a scanner. I don't do anything. I just draw things out on foam and cut them out. Yeah. Um, a lot of people get a bit carried away with, with technology i think sometimes yeah. but you, you with, but missing the raw skill yeah. and all that stuff is fine but you don't need it all mm. you can make i made i've got this kermit here i should show it yeah yeah oh. i made this a couple of weeks ago um and he is made with stuff you cannot that everyone has access to there's nothing there that you could not just get to make that puppet wow it's it's so re I feel like Kermit's in the room. Uh yeah. Well I I I I, I am in the room. Did did you perform? I don't I don't know if you, you did perform, but did you perform mm -hmm. Kermit on the last leg or did you get the original puppet? No, that was Kermit. I, no, I, I never performed the Muppets. Um I only made them for fun. Yeah. Now on on uh, your Instagram because you moved it from Facebook to Instagram, but you do a series that I think could be a YouTube global phenomenon if you transferred it to YouTube. Is, I think you might be right. Yeah. Yeah. Is inside the puppet workshop or is it short? It's is it short for ITP. ITPW. Yeah. Not the catchiest name, but I quite like that about yeah. it. Yeah. And it's basically me in my puppet workshop 
showing people uh, d- doing often doing puppet demonstrations because it's easier than showing how to make something. Yeah. Um, I did do a couple of puppet building ones, but they take a bit too long to film those. I'm a bit lazy. Yeah. And I'm always working, so I sort of can't be bothered. But doing the little ones where I'm just showing you how to do a voice, I can chuck them together in five minutes and then edit them down to a nice two-minute piece. And Bob's your uncle. Well, I quite like them because they're uh, handy and they teach people, and they, and you you're learning in a in an interesting way, and you're not you're not being treated by like a child like the like you would get on like CB, being learning how to count from one to twenty-five. Edutainment. Yeah. And that, that's that's the new format. Well, I always like I only do them to make myself laugh. That's why they've always got these stupid endings, or I throw <laughs> the puppets to the ground, or get angry at them, or whatever. Yeah, I only do it for my own amusement. I happily, I, I mean, I don't really mind if nobody ever sees them. I don't give a monkeys. Yeah, I I just I just think I just think it's like um now the question that I've always wanted to know and since. I made my own original puppet, and you can find out more about that over on TGM Productions for its latest scene of this interview. Now, how do you make clothes? Clothes? <laughs> yeah. uh, well, you can just, well, I generally get them made if I can because it's a, they're a pain to make. So his, his suit was made by somebody else, so it's got to me to do that. Yeah. But I made Josh's suit when I, when I was first started off. His clothes were all made by me. Um, and all the electric mayhem from the Muppet replicas that I do, I always make their costumes because they're quite in depth and what have you. Yeah. But the good thing with puppets is it doesn't really matter if the clothes fit them like a glove because you can pin them on, yeah. which you can't do to a person. The puppets generally don't have shoulders, so you can avoid making shoulders, which are a pain to make anyway. Yeah. Uh, just pin them on or don't bother with clothes because they are a pain. Yeah. Well, um, well, that that's that's really uh, interesting. That now now going from uh, your your likes of your Kermit and your Elmo to more Kermit of Kermit has no clothes. If you notice, that's yeah. it's easier to do. Yeah, going from uh, the well known Jim Henson stuff to more of a lesser well known, but well known if you've got Apple TV Plus, you've able to watch this. But the what's, Fraggle. yes. What's your favourite Fraggle Rock character? Because I noticed you were making one. What's your favourite Fraggle Rock character? I do like Boober that I was making. And again, it's not just because it's easier, because there's no eyes or clothes, <laughs> but he's a great, funny character. I'm a big yeah. fan of Uncle Travelling Matt. And he, he will be the one I make next if I do bother making another one. Yeah. But he has a full costume and hat and shorts and shoes. So he'll, I may just never bother getting around to that. Yeah. So, um, did you ever meet Jim Henson in your career, or were you too late in the game? I he died in nineteen ninety. I started in nineteen eighty eight doing this uh, sort of semi professionally, but so I never met him. But yeah. I was I did work at a Jim Henson exhibition in nineteen ninety four when I was seventeen or something, wow. and that was in Warrington when I first started demonstrating. So I had some of my puppets there, and I was demonstrating those for the yeah. kids. That yeah. was also the first TV thing I did in '94. Mm. Now, now, with with uh, all this fame and and all and all, everyone loving everything you 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 produce. What was it? What was your inspiration in making your own version of the wonderful little alien friend, Alf? I was just a big fan of it as a kid, and at Christmas, I um, I had a few drinks at Christmas Eve, and I thought, well, I'll, I'll start making Alf. So I just started making him on Christmas Eve about 10 o'clock at night, just for a laugh. There was no inspiration beyond, I've, I've not made Alf before. And I thought, well, I've, I'll have a crack at that. Would you ever perform Alf for a, a quirky video on YouTube or anything? No, I don't do any replicas. Yeah. Well, um, so so going from um, making stuff to, to original characters from the BBC next, whatever happened, because the fans will be wondering, Whatever happened to Harry Tonju? I couldn't tell you. I presume it's in a bin somewhere or he's been stood on. Uh, we made lots of those because in every episode of Hacker Time, I think one series, he got crushed in every episode. So I made loads of them. Yeah. It was just a polystyrene cup with bits of stuff stuck to it. Make your own. You can make your own, folks. Is there a, is there a pattern anywhere? Because it used to be a pattern online. For, oh, um, I did. I don't have no idea. On the Not CBC website, they used to have the uh, Make Your Own Harry Tonju. You could print it out, couldn't you? Yeah. yeah. I, is that still on? It may well still be there if you Google it. I couldn't tell you. Mm, well, 
if you use the Wayback Machine, which is a website, you can go back through the history of website. You could probably pinch it from there. But they've but they've removed um they removed on the all shows bits, they remove like shows and hacker time and bits and bobs. So I didn't know it had been taken off, if I'm honest. Well, I've forgotten it's... about it. I, yeah. forgot. I, I know you could print out Wilf's van and make a fold up Wilf yeah. Bevin van. I mean the BBC, the BBC love folding things. They love folding things, don't they? Yeah, well, I never had one of those. I quite yeah. like one of those, actually, those Will Fredbin folding up vans. They, they had a fold up Tracy Beaker, where you can fold her to make a little doll. They, they, they have I a think fold... they did a hacker one, you know. Yeah, yeah, they did. And they did a and, and they did a fold up Tom Baker. Could be all right. I would. <laughs> I've never got the hacker one. I'd like that actually, but I don't have it. Well, if anyone if anyone uh, has these folding up things that haven't folded them away, please get in touch with Phil over on send it, social media. Send it in, I'd like that. I'll put it on my shelf. Yeah, which we will tell you more about his social medias later on in the interview. Now, um, now one of the things is that Series C, when I was uh, a young whippersnapper, <laughs> had, had canon in it. So it had its own mini sitcom, as you will. So what? How did you explain Dodge moving to CBBC, CBBS? I don't think we mentioned it, did we? I don't remember. No, because like, cause I had obviously not seen CBBC properly for a few years, and I came back to it and randomly found Dodge just disappeared, and a robot had appeared, and then the robot just vanished. The robot vanished, yeah. Uh, the robot didn't quite catch on. It never really caught on with the viewers for some reason, and I don't think it was developed enough so we just dropped that yeah. i've got a feeling we didn't mention dodge leaving and going to be because i don't remember ever being a storyline uh, i couldn't tell you i don't think we mentioned it i think you should mention that in the next hacker video that that dodge that, that we have to explain where dodge has disappeared to yeah we might have done it as a video but it certainly didn't go on tell you i don't think i can't no. I, I don't remember when was that about four years ago maybe I, I, th- I think it was because dodge has just been dodge was going from the incredible psychic to hacker to now just being a child's best friend well he likes that i think he's yeah. better off on cb busy it's yeah. where he likes to perform more it prefers cb i think yeah he's always wanted to do that and it, so i think it, it's better better all around really yeah and it works it works better because then you can do more jokes about them meeting each other in the corridor and uh seeing how each of them been getting on because one of my favorite jokes or ever on series c was when they got the scripts mi- mixed up from CBB to CBC, so the CB- CBC had the CBB script in them, the- and they were reading off what was next, and it was whatever was on CBB. Did we do that? I don't remember yeah. doing that. Well, I, I don't, I don't know if you were around when that happened, but it was a, I think it was like Chris, Chris Johnson had the had had the uh, issue with the uh, script mixed up. I've no clue. I don't. Do you know what? I'll be honest with you, Tom. I don't remember anything. Well, um, I mean, I mean. It, it, it's it's been so many years. I I just can't. When we're in CBBC, the way we work, yeah. we only get given the script when we get in. Yeah. Um, and we'll read it a couple of times when we're rehearsing on camera. But I generally read it cold, so I'm often reading it for the first time as it's being filmed. Mm. So it's going straight in and straight out. Wow. There's nothing much I remember apart from the ad libs, yeah. and I don't remember those either, really. Now, um, now I'm only there for the money. <laughs> well, I, I, as mo- as Roddy said to me, uh, last in the last interview, he said a lot of TVs only there for money now. Which yeah, well, is, that's all I'm there for. <laughs> which is not good in the hell. Yeah, but with um the Dark Crystal, which which I do want to get onto now, that was filmed in that was incredible because what it is is I think. The greatest thing about them is not just a TV show itself, but it's the bloopers. Because you are, as the puppeteers, weren't doing the official voices. You were just like miming along and doing everything you need to do for the likes of Simon Pegg to to work. Yeah, well, well, what they did actually on the day they did do the voices. Yeah. So um, Warwick did do the Chamberlain all the way through it, and he yeah. did the voice. And it, did the, it wasn't just doing his normal voice, knowing it would be dubbed. It was doing the proper performance. Yeah. So when it came to dubbing it, Warwick had already set in place the decisions of the way the character's being performed. So it sort of, imp- so Simon Pegg and Co. couldn't really deviate from the way that Warwick had performed it because it yeah. wouldn't then have read. 
So the choices were already set by the performers, I think, for the yeah. way it was delivered, even though the voices were different. Mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't do any voices in it. I was just background and assistant. I only did a few days on it. What I did on it isn't worth talking about. <laughs> did you ever see the bloopers? Because I think they're just brilliant. Uh, yes, I have seen the bloopers, yeah. But I've not seen the actual show. <laughs> I, just, I just think, it's like, you watch the bloopers and think, oh, this show's going to be really good. But then you see the show and it's more serious. Than... Yeah, it, it, it was serious when we were filming it. Um, I thought, this is not really my cup of tea. There's no jokes in this. <laughs> yeah, and then you watch the bloopers and you think, oh, that's full, of, that's full of them just singing randomly. Well, they're good performers, you see. When things go wrong, you may have seen on the hacker bloopers, you've yeah. got to carry on. And although with, with the hacker bloopers, they yeah. are always live. So I've no choice. I can't just cut the puppet off and stand up. I we're on the telly. Yeah. So what's your favorite? Because so Hacker's done a few compilations. We're gonna speak as Hacker was a real person here for a second. Hacker's done a few compilations of these, but out of the yeah. ones that you remember, if you've if you remember much, uh, which ones were your favorites? Well, there's some famous ones that have been used to death. Like the one when that book falls off and lands on my head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's been on It'll Be All Right on the Night, that on ITV, they've shown that. Wow. And David Williams is It'll Be All Right on the Night. And wow. once a skeleton fell over and landed on me and what have you. It's generally, as a puppeteer, you'll find things just yeah. fall on you. Yeah. Because gravity, gravity and puppeteers don't mix well. Yeah. But the uh, my, one of my favourites is the trampoline one where you're, caught, where you're, on, oh, a yeah. call, you're on a call with a call and you're like, Look, I can bounce up and down. It is some getting stuck on the camera. Yeah, well, you know, you know, because you're a puppeteer, you have to try and keep Hacker as real as possible, not to yeah. break the illusion. So that's even funnier because you can just imagine you're you're just like really worried now. You're going to get Hacker back without being spotted. Well, actually, that was a different puppet that I threw up. Yeah, there's a stunt one that has no ah. arm rods on it. Yeah. But I still, so I basically bring the other one down, then with that hand, grab the stunt one and throw it up. <laughs> So the stunt one is now dangling on the camera hood like that, isn't it? Yeah. So I can't bring this one up until that one's down, even though I've got him. Uh, yeah. Because you can't have two on at the same time. So I'm going, Tony! And the cameraman was called Tony on yeah. the day. Tony, get me down, Tony! And Tony's going, what are you talking about? So he can't be <laughs> round. So I've got to just fill time until Tony gets this thing out of shot. And then I can bring this one up. Yeah. So it was it was genuine. He didn't meant he wasn't meant to land on the hood, but it wasn't the same puppet. But it's still the same effect. I couldn't bring the other one up at the same time. And another one of my favourites was when a Hacker was trying to play the bagpipes, and then the bagpipes kept him breaking. And you yeah, were and I was smashing them up on the desk <laughs> and making for him laugh. That was a good yeah. one. Yeah. Was that, that was that, live? Was that a sound effect or was that a sound effect error? It was, I can't remember, no, I think we planned for him to com- continue to play the sound effects, but I wasn't meant to smash them. And then the thing itself, I think, snapped, didn't it? Something <laughs> broke. And I was just making a lot of racket by smashing it on the desk. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't how we were meant to do it, but it was funnier for it, I thought. Yeah. Now, um, speaking of Hacker, uh, I've got a little request from, yes. from yet again, my father and... Uh, my, myself, would you be able to get Hacker to say the words happy happy 50th birthday, Steve? I'm sure I can. I'll go and get him. Oh, is he? How convenient. <laughs> I'll just go out of the way. Hello, Cocker. You all right, Tom? Yeah, I'm all right, Hacker. Good to see you on this uh, YouTube thing. <clears throat> Here we go. Happy birthday, Steve. 58, you don't look it. He does look it, doesn't he? Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Steve. Happy birthday to you. Whoops. How's that? Well done. And uh, that and... would cost you 50 quid on cameo, that. <laughs> wow. And just just because I'm gonna be clipping these uh shots down, would you be able to because my birthday's in the 8th of June? Would you be able to sing happy birthday to myself, please? Cosmo. Hello, Tom. It's Hacker the Dog here wishing you a very happy birthday. In fact, I'm going to sing for you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Tom Mason. Happy birthday to you. Whoops. How's that? Thank you. Now I've had happy birthday from Sweep just randomly and a happy birthday from you. My mind's Thank better because Sweep's stupid. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
Well, he's gone again. That was harsh, wasn't it? But he's gone. So now, um, now after after that wonderful performance, how do you get it to look so realistic when Hacker just runs off? I'm just dead good at my job. Yeah. Now, um, now because there'll be a lot of because uh, this channel is family friendly, there'll be a lot of younger viewers watching. Well, this. I won't say his name then. Yeah, I I, I wouldn't recommend that because I don't think parents would be too chuffed <laughs> if they walk past the kids in the living room. I'm just hearing. We don't want that. We don't no, want that, Cocker. <laughs> now, do you have any in? Do you have any advice to give young up and coming puppeteers? Yes. Uh, practice. Get a camera. Wire it up to your phone, or wire it up to a monitor, and just practice, practice, practice. Get content out there. Put stuff on YouTube, on Instagram, on TikTok, or whatever. Just get on with it. Mm. Now you weren't always. There's no excuse, there's no excuse these yeah. days. You weren't just a puppeteer as well. You, you were also, um, it was on, I think it was either on Yonko's stream or on the Puppeteer podcast, which is if you're a fans of UK, US, and pup, puppetry in general, I highly recommend listening to that. Now, you, you um, how did you learn and where did it all begin for ventriloquism? I'm going to say this in the best way possible, ventriloquism. Ventral I don't look, I don't do it. I mean, I can do it because I'm a fan of it, but it's only through watching it. Yeah. So, so I did, don't do it. Did you not have to practice it? Or did you not try and do that before puppetry? Did you not think that was easier? No, it isn't easier. Puppeteering is easier. Being a puppeteer is easier because you don't have to think about that at all. Mm. But often um, when you're singing in the car and a good bit comes on, but you're at a traffic lights, you don't want to be singing in the car when people next to you are looking at you like a maniac. So that's the point when you start doing it and moving your knife so you can get a bit of, you can carry on singing. It's just yeah. so I can sing without looking yeah. like an idiot in the car. Yeah. Do I don't use that skill for anything else. Do you, have you ever used that when you're, when you're performing your own Orville? No. Well, only on YouTube or Instagram just for a laugh. Yeah. Yeah. But it's only, I'm only messing about. I wouldn't consider myself to be a ventriloquist at all. Would you ever, do you, do you ever sometimes just like try and like, prank someone when you try to like set up the microphone and do the classic trick where they like pretend the microphone's not working never done it never give it a thought i never set up microphones no well that's well yeah because you always you always, you always have the uh headsets on when you do like the um wig and lights when we do the light switch on yeah but often those microphones keep packing in anyway so it's not me doing it it's just because the <laughs> yeah I said, oh, he's a good ventriloquist. No, your microphone's knackered. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth of it. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, as as your um, for my age um age demographic, one of of the most popular uh, puppeteers, uh, I I would uh, like to know who was your favorite puppet from. The, from your like viewings as 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 you get older, for like because it was puppets on like Big Breakfast and that. Which oh, I love it. Yeah, Zig and Zag actually are some of my favourites. They still are, and I'm friends with Mick and Kieran who performed them, and they're lovely right. lads. Um, and I'm a massive fan of Zig and Zag, and I got to meet them a couple of years ago because we used to show a CBBC cartoon of Zig and Zag. Yeah. We so the, Mick and Kieran came over to yeah. England from Ireland to come and meet us, and they're big fans of Hacker. Yeah. So it was a mutual admiration society that day. I brought all my Zig and Zag stuff in for them to sign. Yeah. Well, uh, I was I was about to get on to that. So, you, so I don't know if you know this, but you, uh, but you might want to know this now. So on uh, the App Store, you can get the RCE app. Oh yes, yeah, so you can watch Zig and Zag on the den. Yeah. So the den. Yeah. I I I one of the one of the things that really weird for me because I'm sixteen and. People say I've got the I've got the mind and the soul of an eighty year old. You don't now, want that. Now, before we did this interview, my mum said I, I had some grey hair. I'm thinking I don't want my eighty year old to be showing. Get some sharpie on it. Yeah, and so I was wondering if you ever saw the den. Actually, I've got a DVD of it here. Ooh, can you still the buy the DVD of the den? You can probably get it on eBay, I'm guessing. I actually have got the best of the den here somewhere, and it's signed. But can I say I can't see it? Off wow. top of my head. Because I, I really, I really do like the den. Because um, really funnily, one of the characters in the den, uh, Dustin the turkey, 
ended up I've got rep- a DVD of him as well, yeah. Yeah. Well, he represented uh, Ireland in 2008 in Eurovision. He did. I know he did, yeah. Hang on, I'm trying to find this DVD. I've got the best of Justin the Turkey here. Yeah. Because he's the fact that Justin sent me this. Wow. Wow. I can't believe turkeys have, have got your address. Turkeys have got my address. <laughs> yeah. I can't find it. Justin. As we say the words, just in the turkey could be on. No. Yeah. There you uh, go. There it was. And this is the Den DVD that I couldn't find. Yeah. There you go. So, do you know the story about how Dustin made it to Eurovision? Well, he's been on telly for 20 odd years. He's been around for a long, long time. Yeah. But, um, but the answer is no, I don't. Well, I'll I think tell he might have told me, but I've forgotten. I'll tell you the story. It's a very interesting. No, Ireland for a few years kept on winning and winning and winning and winning. And they're like, and they're they're running out of money. So they had to get an act on to lose. So they got Dustin the Turkey to perform Do the Poir. Now, it was basically just Dustin just yelling about Terry Rogan's wig. Was he in a trolley, wasn't he? Yeah, it was in a massive trolley. And there was mainly a woman singing more than him. It's for the best. He's not yeah. got the best singing voice, Dustin. Right. But <laughs> Dustin is actually performed by a man called Johnny Morrison, who wow. is Kieran's brother. Wow. Zig's brother. It's a small one. I would, I was, because I, I think these, I think it's really interesting talking to puppeteers. Um, and no, no reference to the podcast there this time. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love making references. Uh, I would love to interview um, Dodge and Zig and Zag and hopefully Dustin, but uh, sadly, uh, Dodge has never got back to me. Uh, he, he hasn't got hands, he can't type. <laughs> no, but, but Warwick, Warwick's, Warwick's only ever got back to me about uh, a monitor uh, on, on the internet. But um, He'll always talk about monitors. You can always start a conversation with Warwick by mentioning a monitor. Yeah, uh, and so hopefully... And that's also where it'll end. Yeah, hopefully if Warwick's uh, watching this, um, you might get your um, hour of fame on the on the show. Warwick, as well. Warwick, if you're watching this, do Tom's interview. It's the only way it'll stop him mithering you. <laughs> well, some people think I'm a stalker. Zig and Zag, if you're watching this, do Tom's interview, and then he'll leave you alone. <laughs> no, no, what if? It's the only way you can stop him. <laughs> Now, now to, to wrap up this glorious <laughs> interview. Yes, well, I'll be honest with you, Tom, and I don't mind admitting it, I skipped through it. Well, I, well, I, well, there is going to be uh, clips, uh, another punk here, clips coming soon to uh, T-Gen Productions. And uh, ho- hopefully one day I- I'll be able to um, be on Puppeteer podcast, even though uh, I don't do much Puppeteer. I just want to be on a podcast that's got some fame to get me more um, followers. It's all about yeah. the numbers, Cocker. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah because uh, my Alex Horn interviews on 5.2k views. Who's interviews that? Alex Horn. Oh, from um, the telly. Taskma- from Taskmaster. Now, I, I am going to mention this as, as, as one of the closing numbers of this uh, pod, of this, uh, not podcast, this interview <laughs> is, is um, what What's your opinion on Hacker featuring in a puppet Taskmaster? Because I mentioned it to Alex and he wrote it down on his uh, telephone. What, well, what that, would... mean, that, that means it'll definitely happen. If it happens, I shall do it. If they ask me to do it, I'll do it. Ian's been on it and Ian mentioned yeah. me on it. In fact. He did. He also mentioned Dick and Dom, who also won't get back to me about doing an interview. Dick and Dom, if you're watching this, do Tom's interview, then he'll leave you alone. It's as simple as that. It's for your own good. Do it. Get it out of the way. And then he'll leave you alone. (laughs) (laughs) Dustin the Turkey, if you're watching this, do Tom's interview and then he will leave you alone. So so with um, the whole of the puppet sphere, sphere, did you ever want to appear? Did you ever wish you were... Doing sweep in the uh, round table of weakest link. Was sweep on that? Yeah, such so as no, no, it was Sue. Sorry, I meant Sue. Oh, yeah, uh, well, only Sue can speak, so the other ones would have been rubbish on it, really. <laughs> yeah, well, the well, she yeah, and Robinson zipped up Zippy's mouth. She did. Well, Ronnie obviously was doing Zippy on that. Yeah. Um, but uh, Roy Skelton, who did Zippy's voice, was up in a sound booth with Brenda Longman, who does Sue's voice. Ronnie didn't do Zippy's voice back then. 
Mm. So they're just lip syncing to what Roy's saying in a different yeah. room. If you watch it again, you'll notice they're writing down different answers to what they're saying because they're different people. Ah, how so would Ron, I... Ronnie and Mal, um, Ronnie and um, the guy playing George were just stuck yeah. in that booth, waggling the puppets to sounds that were coming out of somewhere else. Wow, I'm going to have to analyse that for another video on this channel. I'm, I'm not that. implying that it was cheating, no. but the woman who does Sue's voice, Brenda, could have been in a different room <laughs> googling the answers. That's all I'm saying. Well, I mean, it was only for charity. The money. I'm not implying that Sue cheated, but she could have cheated. Well, if I ever get hold of her, I'll be sure to clip this. Brenda, Brenda Longman, if you're watching this, do Tom's interview and then he'll leave you alone. <laughs> So, 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 and uh, my final question to you is, um, what is your favourite puppet you've ever performed on the Hacker Time set, not including Hacker? Uh, well, Fredbin is my favourite. I love him. He's a great character. I love the fact that he wheezes and he's an old man and he does that all the time. All right, Hacker, I'll drive the van. And I used to do a lot of that wheezing to annoy the gallery. And they would always say, I do less wheezing. But I'd always do it before the end of a word. So they couldn't clip it out in the edit. Mm. So I'll go, all right, hacker, I'll get you there. And they had to leave loads of it in. And it was annoyed them. And I enjoyed that. Well, this has been a wonderful... I can't tell you how long this has been going for, because... Uh, I haven't gonna look at the recording yet, but it might too long. You can also buy. You can also. I'll probably do a counter for the amount of puppeteers you've done. Uh, you can also go and buy from uh, Bandcamp, which is a fantastic website. The Pound Chop Boys album. For how much? I don't know. A few quid. It's worth few. it. Yeah, and you can also, if you want to get unofficial hacker merch, buy the mug. A red bubble from Red Bubble. Search for it. Yeah. Or just Google image. Just Google image a photograph and send it to Vistaprint. Do yeah. whatever you want. Yeah, because Hacker is one of the. I reckon, right? I'll, I'll say this just before we, uh, Babush. I reckon Hacker should open his own shop in Wigan, where he only sells his meat paste and DVDs of Hacker okay. Time. Don't think we haven't asked. <laughs> yeah, Hacker branding meat paste. So, Phil, where can people Hi. view your content? If you have any interest in watching any of my nonsense, you can go to Instagram at Phil Fletcher Official. You can catch up with all the latest Pound Shop Boys information at Pound Shop Boys on Instagram. You keep your eye on Hacker the Dog at Hacker T Dog on Instagram. If you want to see me do more gonk stuff, go to We Are The Gonks on Instagram. In fact, do whatever you like. It's your life. I'm not telling you what to do. Enjoy yourselves. So... Hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoyed the interview. There'll be more interviews coming very soon from more special people. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Not Warwick. Well, fingers crossed Warwick sees this video and goes, I'll do it. Woo! I don't know what that voice Bye. was. But hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all on the deleted scene. Time more time out. Bye. Good night. <laughs>